Hi, my name is Nina Frank, and I'd like to share my personal story about a family with hope and dreams of seeing each member happy and successful in their life. A typical family that uh, dreams of their children living healthy, prosperous lives. A typical family that dreams of vacations and holidays together and grandchildren. My husband Bill and I have been married for 53 years. We had four children. Our oldest is a girl, followed by three sons. And when people ask how many children I have, I always struggle with the question. Do I have four? Uh, if I say Ryan died, with the whole, will the whole conversation turn into a question about how did he die? And um, that just doesn't uh, bring forth a lot of conversation um, with just meeting someone new. Ryan Frank was the third eldest of our children. He was a bright, handsome young man uh, with a good heart and a deep love for our family. After he graduated from high school, he got a job and moved into his own apartment. <clears throat> and we saw him less and less, and soon the signs of addiction began um, to surface. And he was already pretty deeply involved with drugs at that time. Um, after that, life in our family and Ryan's family was never the same. <clears throat> Much of our family life revolved around how are we going to protect Ryan? How are we going to keep him alive? Uh, Ryan was arrested and put into jail, which was my worst fear at that time of having a child in jail, imagine that, me having a child in jail. That's what I kept thinking to myself. Uh, and then I realized I'm just like hundreds and thousands of other family members and parents who have gone through that experience. Um, after serving six months, Ryan was released and we picked him up that evening at the jail and took him to Hazleton Treatment Center in Minnesota for a 30-day treatment program. After his 30-day treatment program, he was enrolled in a program for young men called Gray Wolf Lodge. It was a program in the state of Washington, so we flew him to Washington to see if that program could be of help to him. And he flourished and be, he became a mentor in the program. He spent four months there and um, headed back to Minnesota, where he became a member of a sober living house. Uh, Ryan did fine for three years, uh, living within that sober community, practicing the 12-step program, and then all of a sudden he decided that he did not need that anymore. So, um, one day in October, we received a call from a friend of Ryan's telling us that <clears throat> Ryan was in the hospital on life support. We immediately drove to Minnesota with um, our other children. Over a three-day period, our family and friends hoped and prayed that Ryan would wake up. And um, our final test was to watch the doctor take him off of the respirator, and wait for him to breathe on his own. Of course, I was in the room, and as the minutes ticked away, I begged him to breathe, but he didn't. Uh, and this was the saddest day of my life. Because of our loss, we were compelled to do something positive with our grief and to um, keep his memory alive to uh, share the good parts of our son. So we started a corporation with a 501c3 called Ryan's House of Hope. Um, and um, along with our board of directors, we were able to buy a really nice house out in the Western Scene area, a big house. Uh, and <clears throat> Men uh, who reside at the house have all the responsibility of 
caring for the house along with the board of directors of Ryan's House of Hope. And there's zero tolerance towards any drugs or alcohol. Uh, the person that enters the house must have completed a treatment program. Uh, six to eight men can reside there, and it's a democratically run house without any staff under the charter of an Oxford living house. Um, the house has been operating since 2012. To date, over 100 men have lived in the house. Many of these men have told us that it saved their lives. And based on the DePaul survey in Chicago, they did a study on sober living houses like Oxford houses. The success rate um, of these houses is 65% of those living in an Oxford style house become successful, productive members versus 30% that don't have any kind of uh, aftercare or treatment. So currently all six of the men in the house have been there over a year and um, they're thriving. So that's really the end of my story. Um, it's a short story, but it was uh, many years that it took, you know, to get to this point of being able to talk uh, freely about addiction and, and sharing what we know and how we can potentially help in our community. That's very important to our family. Thank you.